Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to another brand new episode of the Having It All podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens. I'm energized. I'm happy. I'm psyched. And uh, yeah, I'm thrilled that you're here with me today to just talk about having it all. Talk about creating and experiencing an abundant, loving life. If you don't believe that having it all is possible, you probably don't want to be listening to this podcast. I'm just saying because everything about this podcast is really owning the idea that you can have it all that you can experience abundance and love in all of the most important areas to you and in your life. So if that's you, then let's get rolling. Today's topic is an awesome one because I'm talking about relationships. And I'm going to be sharing with you the biggest thing that I've learned about how to improve the relationships that you have in your life. I'm talking about relationships with your spouse or your siblings, or your parents, or your coworkers, or your employees, or your neighbors, no matter what it is, I'm going to share with you how you can improve that relationship today, and how you can create a better relationship between you and those people. And this is something that I've learned over many, many, many years of sabotaging relationships, of poisoning relationships, of breaking up relationships. And so I'm sharing with you insights from my own life that you can apply to your life. So this is going to be a great one. Definitely want to tune in. Let's kick things off with some magic. Now, if this is your first time on the podcast, you might be thinking, magic, what is that? Is this dude about to to say some spells or some witchcraft stuff or what's going on? Well, magic in the context of this podcast is your ability to influence yourself, others in life in an empowering way. We call these moments magical moments. It's the moment when, you know, you say that you're going to wake up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym and your alarm goes off and you're like, you know what? I do not want to get out of bed. It would be so great to just sleep here. But then there's that little voice inside you that's like, nah, get up and you get your butt up. That right there is magic. You just influence yourself in an empowering way. So the reason why I talk about magic is because that's one of the byproducts when you have it all. When you have that mentality that you are living an abundant, loving life, guess what? Magical moments are happening all over the place, and you start to spot them. So if you can train yourself to see the magic that you're creating each and every day, then you really can start to connect with the fact that you have it all right now. You do. You just aren't seeing it. You aren't believing it. You aren't connecting with it. So that's why I share my magic, and that's why I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on your own magic. And I'm going to actually ask you to pause the episode and reflect on it. But first, I'll share mine. My magic has to do with feedback and accountability and my inner circle, the people that I surround myself with to give me that feedback and hold me accountable. So in the past week, I've had a number of meetings with the different uh, communities I'm a part of, but two in particular um, this was my my small group called A Circle of Influence. We met last Tuesday, and I volunteered to put myself in the hot seat to receive some very pointed feedback about what I had been going through in my life. It's called Epic Challenge. And so I said, you know what, guys? I got some stuff going on. I would love for you to uh, to help me see what I'm not seeing. You know, I would love for you to just give it to me straight. And what was magical about that experience is that these folks didn't hold back. They were very courageous and bold with their feedback and and with just giving me some advice. And I'm very, very grateful for that because I need to hear it. You know what I mean? Like I I, I really thrive when I, I just someone just gives it to me straight, is totally honest and blunt. And so it was magic for me to have that group of people around me last week that could help me see my greatness when I wasn't seeing it myself. You know, they hold me to that. They hold that vision for me of that greater version of me, of that beast mode, Matthew, even when I'm not being that man in the moment. And that right there is magic. And then today, it happened again. Today's meeting was with my business mastermind. And once again, I'm talking about the things that I'm experiencing with my business and things I'm doing, and I get feedback. 
and I get some ideas and I get some suggestions. And it's just magical to have those people who can, in that moment, clear out everything out of their mind and just listen and connect with where I'm at, with what I'm going through. And then be able to receive those downloads and have the courage to just say it straight. So that's my magic today. It is having created those crew communities and those groups around me and surrendering to that feedback. Yes, because it's so hard to surrender. So shout out to my Your Day community and the folks in my COI, you know who you are, and the folks in my my mastermind group, you know who you are, and uh, so grateful to each and every one of you. So that's my magic. And now, now is your opportunity to pause the episode, literally hit pause, and reflect on at least one magical moment in your life. Think about when you influenced yourself, others, or life itself in an empowering way in the last 24 hours. It can be big, it can be small, all of it matters. So go ahead and pause the episode now. All right, let's move on and jump into listener love. One of my favorite, favorite parts of the podcast, which uh, I started doing probably a couple years ago, just giving love and shouting out you. Yeah, you, because I'm so grateful to the fact that you tune in every week and that you shoot me messages and that we can connect via email or we can connect on Instagram or sometimes we connect in real life. It's, it's amazing and I'm grateful for it. And I really just want to shout you out because, you know, you guys make this podcast go. You're the, you're the, like the gasoline in this thing. And I'm so grateful for you. So today's listener love goes out to Kristen from Instagram. Kristen, thank you so much for just carving out some time out of your day to reach out. It's so cool. You know, it's so cool that, that you reached out. And uh, Kristen, you're here in Atlanta, which is awesome too. So we might have the opportunity to sync up in real life, which I think is so dope. And Chris, I just, you know, appreciate you listening to the podcast and really internalizing the messages and going and being it. That's the biggest part, right? When you, when you hear the message and you let it strike that chord within you, and then you go out and you shift up one of your art forms, one of your habits, one of your actions, your relationships, your thoughts. That right there is beautiful. So Chris and I'm super grateful to you for tuning in, taking a moment to hit me up on Instagram, and just grateful for, for your beingness. If you would like to be like Kristen and reach out to me and get into a conversation and just chop it up, then you can hit me up in two places. The first is Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram. That's been my fun playground for the, the past several months. The second place you can hit me up is on email, mattcbivens at gmail.com. It's my personal email address, and I'd love to hear from you there. And uh, get creative. Send me a video. Send me a voice note. You know, I love that. I've, I've received videos in the past and voice notes, and that stuff always makes my day. And I like to respond in video sometimes and respond in voice notes. So get creative when you reach out. And um, I would love to, to talk, to receive some feedback on the show. Give me some suggestions for topics that, that you want me to talk about. Uh, or just share what's going on with you. All of it is beautiful. Yes. All right. Before we jump into the conversation about relationships, I got a message out there for all my entrepreneur fathers. Yes, this is for any entrepreneur out there who is a father, husband, you're creating a business, maybe you're a business owner. I want to help you all because I am you. (laughs) I'm a father. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a husband. And I juggle about a dozen other hats. And I know what it's like to be that person, to have that child that you're raising, to have that business that you're growing, to have that spouse that you're going through life with. And I know the struggles of that, you know, the, the feeling of being imbalanced, like you've got so many things and not enough time, so many things, not enough energy, so many things and just not enough patience sometimes. And I know what it's like to watch your relationships start to fade and slip as you prioritize in one area, you think that another area has to go and, and has to, you know, degrade. And so I'm telling you, because I've experienced it, that you can have it all. You can have a life where you have an amazing business, where you have a hot, passionate, sexy, thriving relationship with your spouse, where you have beautiful, connected relationships with your kids, where you have friendships that are fulfilling and truly fun, and where you feel like the man. Yeah, where you feel like a king. 
where you feel like you can activate beast mode and be that whenever you want in your life. You can absolutely have that. And I want to help you if you feel very disconnected from everything I just said. (laughs) So if that sounds like you and you want to talk, hit me up. You can do it in two ways. The first way is matthewbivens.com slash work with me. You can fill that out and we can talk about what it looks like to actually work together one-on-one to help you become that man that you want to be and create the experience in life that you really want to experience. And the second thing is if you have questions, if you want to talk some more, I would love to just jump on a 15-minute call with you. And you can do that by hitting me up on my email, my business email, matthew at matthewbivens.com and we'll get something on the schedule. So I really want, I'm playing for dads, entrepreneur dads all over the world to really be sitting on their king throne as business owners, fathers, partners, lovers, creators, all of that. That's what I'm playing for. So let's do it. All right. Let's flow now into today's topic. It's a juicy one because it's about relationships. And no matter who you are, you've got some relationships going on in your life right now. And I really want to share with you without dragging this stuff out. I want to share with you what I've learned, what is the number one way that you can improve any relationship in your life that is not where you want it to be. Your spouse, the the person that you want to date, your kids, your dog walker, your boss, whatever. The biggest thing that I learned about improving relationships is that in order to improve any relationship, you must grow and change yourself. That's it. Your relationships will only grow as much as you do. What that means is if you're in a crummy marriage, in order to create something different in that marriage, in that relationship, you've got to grow. If you're frustrated with your siblings right now, if you guys have been fighting for years, maybe you're not even talking, and you want to create something different in that relationship, you have to grow. You have to change. If you're just so pissed off at your boss because you feel stifled, you feel like they control your time and they control your vacations and and they're never going to give you a promotion, they're never really going to let you shine, then the way for you to improve that relationship and everything that is attached to it is for you to grow. You. I'm going to quote Gandhi right now. Yeah, I'm going there. Gandhi is quoted as saying, you must be the change you want to see in the world. I know you've heard that quote before. Guess what? The same exact thing applies in your relationships. You must be the type of spouse, sibling, friend, neighbor that you would like to be with. You need to become that person. And here's why. This is where I want you to think. What is the common denominator with every single one of your relationships? Going back to the very first relationship you can think of, what is the common denominator? Take a minute to think about that for yourself. The answer is you. You are the common denominator. You are the one common element between all of your relationships, past, present, and future. You are also the only one you can control in those relationships. This might be a shock to some some of you right now, but it's a myth thinking that you can control other people. That's a total myth. And it's a power loss when you hang your happiness on another person. Well, I'll feel happy when blank. I would be happier if only that person would blank. This relationship would be so much better if only they understood that blank. So you might be living in a world of fantasy and no power. And that's not a fun place. That's not a place to create magic from. That's not a place to have it all from. When you're in fantasy, in denial, and when you're giving up your power. One of my favorite books of all time, you've heard me talk about it so many times, is Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. In habit number one, which is be proactive, he talks about this beautiful thing called the circle of influence and the circle of concern. 
the circle of influence and the circle of concern. So you can think about this as there are two areas that you can really focus your time, your energy, your attention on things you can control, which is a circle of influence, and things you can't control, circle of concern. A lot of us put a lot of time and energy and attention into our circle of concern, the things in which we cannot control. And we don't put enough time, energy, attention into our circle of influence, the things we can control. Guess what? When it comes to relationships, who can you control? I'm going to ask you that question. Answer it for yourself. Who can you control in a relationship? Yourself. That's it. That's your circle of influence, focusing on yourself, putting your time, your energy, your resources into you, into your growth, into your healing, into your development. But that's not what happens. You put your time, energy, resources into the other person. And you spend so much time in your circle of concern where magic does not happen. And so what that looks like in a relationship is you're focusing on that other person, meaning you believe that the answer to your relationship, the improvement of that relationship lies with the other person. You start thinking about what they need to stop doing, what they need to say, how they need to show up. You say things like, well, you know what? We'll have a better marriage when he goes to counseling. Or you say something like, you know, I'll be friends with him once he apologizes. But guess what? I've just said it. I'm going to remind you. Your power doesn't lie in your circle of concern. It lies in your circle of influence. And the only person you can control is you. You can focus your time and energy in yourself or other people. I got to share a little example of how I used to operate in life. Me, 10 years ago, when I would be in a relationship let's say with a you know, significant other girlfriend, and we would get into a fight, get into an argument. My MO was to be heard because I always felt like I was right. And so anytime that something came up, my ego was so unwilling to believe that I could be wrong or to admit that I was wrong. Sometimes I knew I was wrong, but you would not hear me say that, at least not in the initial fight. And so I would do everything I could to be right. I would rather be right than happy. And so when we would get into the argument, what that looked like is I wasn't really listening. Whatever she was saying, I was just waiting for my opening to get my point across. Or I was thinking of my response while she was saying it. I would latch onto something and I would go through my, my, you know, my, my armory of defenses and pull out a weapon that I knew I was about to drop a bomb. Oh, you said this? Okay, brrr, got it. Boom, that's what I'm going to drop on you. And that's how I operated in relationships when it came to arguments and disagreements and things like that. Not very effective. And I used to think, gosh, why do we always get into this? It's like a pattern. We always get into these types of fights. What the hell's going on? This is, I, I, I hate it. You know what? If she would only just get it, she would only get it, then we could move forward and we wouldn't keep repeating this stuff. That's the kind of conversation I would have in my head. If she would only just listen to me, listen to what I'm saying. I said I was sorry. I said that, blah, 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 blah. I said this, I said that. Why won't she get it? That's the type of thing that I would be saying to myself. That was me 10 years ago. Me today, I take a very different approach, a very different approach, and as a result, I've created very different experience in my relationships. My approach now, nine times out of 10, is to seek to understand before being understood. It's to approach a situation, first of all, being in the center of my power, right? Meaning centering myself, using my tools, humbling myself, sitting on my throne, that means I'm not coming from a space of ego. I'm not coming from a space of needing to be right. I might take a deep breath. You know, I might collect myself before continuing with the conversation. And then I use empathy and I try to put myself in their shoes and really understand what they're going through. If it's with Sarah, I'm going to try to understand what she's feeling, why she's feeling the way she's feeling. 
without probing, without trying to poke holes, but really just understand to the point where I can echo back to her what she's feeling. And then when she says, yeah, you know what? That's, that's what I'm going through. It's a technique called mirroring. So when I can mirror that back to her, a lot of times we're now in a space where I can share my piece. I can share my point. And it can be received. It is a very different energy that I come with in these conversations, in these disagreements, in fights. Because I'm not taking blame. I'm not taking responsibility. I'm being humble. I'm looking at how I help to co-create the situation. Because no matter what relationship you're in, you've co-created it. Yeah. You. You were the one who brought your stuff to the halfway point and they brought their stuff to the halfway point and when you combine the two together, it created the relationship that you're currently in. It's not their fault. That's a big thing sometimes for us to let go of. That your crummy relationship is not the other person's fault. It's your responsibility. And there's a difference in that. There's so much power when you take responsibility for what you are creating in your life. Unhappy marriage, take responsibility for it. Somewhere along the line, you probably forgot to hold your standards. You probably forgot to take care of yourself. You probably forgot to fully express yourself. You stifled it down. You shut it down because of what they might think or because you don't want to upset the kids or because of whatever it is that you come up with. But that was your choice and your doing. And as a result, you've helped to create, along with your partner, the relationship that you're now experiencing. That's how every single relationship is. It takes two people, two people. And so when you're able to get into a space where you can really take responsibility, humble yourself, see where opportunities lie, and do something about it, that's how you can improve any single relationship. So I want to actually break down a couple steps on how you can do this in real life because I know right now there's at least one relationship that you would love to improve. One relationship where maybe you've been thinking, boy, if only they did X, Y, Z, or if only they understood this, then things would be better. I'm going to teach you how you can flip that. The first thing that I want you to do, I just mentioned before, is you got to own the fact that you are responsible for how that relationship has flowed. If the relationship sucks right now, you contributed to it, right? Those relationships are always co-created and it means both people were involved. You've got to begin taking responsibility and ownership over what you've created. That's the first step and if you can't get past that, you will not be able to get through the rest and you really won't be able to grow so that you can create something different in your relationship. Once you are able to accept the fact that you have responsibility in this, the second step is for you to examine where your opportunities for growth are. Where can you work on yourself? Is it in your honesty or maybe in your courage or or perhaps in holding standards or maybe in being vulnerable or maybe in empathy and seeking to understand before being understood? Where can you grow? Because remember, who you are being and who you have been has brought you to this point. So if you want to create something new, something different in the future, you got to change up who you're being, right? Your beingness, your character, which is a compilation of your habits. And your habits can be broken down into your art forms, A-R-T, actions, relationships, and thoughts. Examine those to see which ones are not serving you in creating the relationship that you want. Here's an example. If you're the type of person who routinely withholds information, which is a polite way of saying lying, if you don't tell the truth, if you aren't transparent to your partner, then guess what? That's contributing to the relationship you have right now. So instead of blaming them for whatever it is that you think they're doing, own the fact that you aren't transparent, that you withhold, that you keep secrets, and work on that. Be more vulnerable. Become more courageous. Share more. Open up more. 
Talk about what scares you. Talk about what you suck at. Talk about those things that are really freaking you out about the relationship that if you speak them, it might happen, so I'm never going to speak them. That's how you start to work on yourself. And that's how you start to grow yourself. And that leads us to the, step, the third step. That's do the work. Yeah, you got to actually do it. And guess what? It's hard. Yeah, it's hard, especially if it's something ingrained that you've been doing your whole life. And the way you can spot that is if you've had a pattern of relationships breaking down in the same type of way, then yeah, you've been doing it for your whole life. So just understand that it might be hard, but the way that you create new relationships, the way that you create new experiences, create new things is you got to do something new. You got to do the work. So just do it and take it small, like start small, right? Going back to that example of you withhold from your partner. Maybe the first small step you do is just speak out loud to yourself, right? In your own car, when you're alone, just speak those things that you've been withholding. And then maybe once you've been able to vocalize them, you can write them down. And then maybe once you've written them down, perhaps you can talk to somebody about them. And maybe once you talk to somebody else, maybe now you have the courage to talk to your partner about it. Start small. That's the only way you're going to be able to to get to those big things that you want to confront. And confronting those things and making those changes within yourself is the only way you're going to create real change and growth in your relationship. And the fourth step, sort of a bonus step, is to surround yourself with people who you are truly inspired to be around because of who they are being. Get into their energy. It's going to rub off on you. So who out there is showing up powerfully for themselves? is constantly working on growing themselves, is addressing those areas that they feel they have opportunity in. Be around those types of people and that energy is going to rub off and you're going to start naturally addressing those things in your life that you want to work on. And as you address those things in your life, stuff is going to start to shift. What you experience is going to start to shift. It can happen in how you relate to it, meaning You won't take things as personally. You won't feel the same type of way. Or it can happen in what you actually create starts to change. You start to attract people into your life who maybe have more integrity themselves. Maybe they're more confident themselves. Maybe they're more honest themselves because of who you are being. That is how it works. Here's another bonus step. This one just came to me. If you want to improve a relationship, go talk to other people about where you can grow. Ask them for feedback. If you want to improve a friendship, go talk to some of your other friends and say, hey, how can I be be a better friend? You can get feedback from other people, get ideas from other people, and they'll tell you, you know, they'll tell you where, you know, this is where I see you. This is, this is where I see you have opportunities. Don't take it personally, but just hear what they have to say and see if anything resonates as an area that you want to address. Bottom line is use that feedback to inform where you want to now focus your time and energy in your own growth. This stuff is not easy. And you know what happens as a result of doing this type of work? Sometimes relationships end. That might be the growth. Yeah. This is about growing relationships and they don't always grow in the direction that you want them to because sometimes when you do the work on yourself and you address those things within you that have been contributing to relationships breaking down, sometimes those relationships are no longer there, like they've served their purpose and they're ready to move on to something else and you have to be okay with that and that's where your attachment's going to come in. You might say to yourself, no, 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 I'm not going to work on me because if I work on me and I elevate, then I might lose the other person. Once again, look at that. That's attachment right there. Are you going to live a life where you dumb yourself down and you dull yourself, you turn down your shine because you don't want to lose another person or you don't want to offend another person? We do that all the time and that never results in magical moments. That never results in truly experiencing a life where you can say, yeah, I have it all. That results in a life where you settle. And that's not what we're playing for. 
An abundant, loving life is not a life of settling. It's not a life of saying, you know what, that's too confronting, I'm going to go in this other direction. If you've heard this podcast in the past, then you know that's not what we do here. We're about massive action. Stepping into those fears. And it's okay if you're afraid, we do it anyway. Because once you get to the other side of that fear, you see that you can have everything that you ever desired. From relationships to wealth to health in your body, whatever it is, all of that is on the other side of your fears. So if working on yourself scares you, great. Do it even more. And you don't have to not be scared. That's one of the the fallacies that I think a lot of us have when it comes to doing things that are scary. We believe that, you know what, because it's scary, I have to wait till it's no longer scary to do it. No, screw that. It's going to be scary. It's going to be scary until it stops being scary. And a lot of times it stops being scary once you get to the other side of that chasm. I saw a video of a friend on Facebook recently and she was traveling and and she's scared of heights and she's standing at the top of this cliff. She's about to jump off. And you can see that she's scared. She's looking down and she backs up and she looks over and there's people in the water who are like, come on, you can jump, you can do it. But she was scared, so she waited. Eventually, she mustered up the courage and she jumped. Guess what? She was scared all the way until she hit the water. It wasn't as if the fear went away on the top of the cliff and then she jumped. No, you jump even if you're scared. And so if you're afraid that you're going to lose a relationship or something's going to break down or they're going to get mad at you or whatever is going to happen, if you're afraid that something's going to happen in your relationship because you want to work on yourself, that's okay. You do it anyway. This is about you. This is about you really loving who you are becoming and who you are being in each and every moment. Your experience of abundance does not rely on somebody else. It doesn't rely on whether or not your your husband stays with you. Because that's not where your true happiness comes from. It comes from within. And it can come from within. Maybe right now you've connected your happiness wagon to another person. And that's just the danger of doing that. And so this process that I'm talking about and sharing with you on this episode and in so many others on this podcast, this is about internalizing your happiness, internalizing your fulfillment, internalizing your love, recognizing that the most powerful place for those things to come from is from within you. It's dangerous to say, you know what? I only feel love when I receive love from other people. That's a dangerous thing to do. I only feel happiness and fulfillment when my friends give it to me. That's you giving away your power. I am all about you reclaiming your power, taking ownership and responsibility over your life, examining those areas where you have opportunities to grow, to heal, to transform yourself so that you can go out and create everything that you want in your life. And that's what you have the opportunity to do right now in those relationships that you feel are not where you want them to be. So, if you are expecting some sort of uh, special pill that you can take or one little thing I can tell you that's going to be real easy for you to do to then go and transform those relationships, that's not it. And there's a part of you that knew that wasn't it, that knew that it was really about digging in deep and doing the work. But now you know what you need to do. So if you've got a marriage that isn't where you want it to be, a friendship that isn't where you want it to be, a relationship at work that isn't where you want it to be, you know what you need to do now in order to grow it. You need to grow yourself. You need to put the time, energy, focus, and attention on you, identifying your weaknesses, start doing the work to grow and expand yourself, and see as those relationships around you grow and expand as well. So I'm very excited for you. I am loving, loving, loving what you all are creating and what you're doing day in and day out as you are participating in the conversation on this podcast, as you're being a part of the Having It All community, and as you're just jumping into this energy of having it all and living an abundant, loving life. So please share with me as you go down this journey of expanding and growing your relationships. Let me know how it goes. Let me know the things that you're running into. Let me know the magic you're creating. I would love to hear it. I would love to put my energy behind it. You can reach me on my Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens. 
or you can reach me on my email address, mattcbivens at gmail.com. And I will continue holding the space for you to show up powerfully as the king or queen that you are so that you can truly say with every piece of DNA in your body that you have it all. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you living your abundant, loving life. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.